What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay Miniature Rescue. Today we're going to do something pretty awesome. So a lot of you might remember a few months ago a subscriber by the name of Ben Davies sent in the Green Knight for me to rescue. So a little bit after that video came out Ben contacted me again and asked if I wanted to do another project but stepping up the scale a little bit more. You might remember in that Green Knight video, it was on a pretty fancy looking base. And Ben builds bases quite well, I might add. So we emailed back and forth a few times talking about design and what we kind of wanted to do. And Ben came up with some really cool ideas for this black coach. So starting off with this Daler Rowney white ink, I'm going to lay down this top down zenithal highlight and that's going to set us up for some really bright nice colors to work from on these curtains. So using this crimson ink I'm going to go over those curtains and that's going to be our first base color to work up from. The nice thing about shooting out of the airbrush with these inks is that they're very translucent and using zenithal highlights makes it really easy to get the shadows and the highlights all in one. Using this turquoise ink I want to show another example of that zenithal highlighting using these inks. So I did this to the driver earlier with the white and now I'm just going over it with the turquoise and I'm being patient and I'm trying to build that color up nice and slow and the translucency of the ink really lends itself to this type of highlighting. Again, it really takes that white and even if you're hitting those darks, it's not really tinting it too much beyond black so it leaves a really nice result. So going back to the curtains, we're gonna grab some Nagaroth Knight and water this down into a glaze and I'm just going to glaze this in over probably three or four different steps to get the ends of those curtains and the shadows to that darker purple. So you can see jumping off of that highlight and just putting some different colors into the shadows, it's already created something pretty nice and, and a little nicer than if you just sort of brush that on. But we need to up those highlights a little bit more. So with Mephiston Red, I'm going to go over a lot of the flatter, longer areas and try and blend that in using the glazing technique into that purple. So I'm kind of dragging it up from the bottom to make sure that that pigment gets pushed toward the top. And we're going to do this again over three or four different layers until we get to our next highlight color, which is Evil Sun's Scarlet. And this has a little more orange in it, so we're going to do that again, but try and keep it a little bit smaller, almost like an edge highlight, while still glazing toward the top of that highlight. And we're just going to make sure that this is as bright as it can be before adding another highlight. With Fire Dragon Bright as our final highlight here, we're going to use the same technique that we've been doing, keep it a little bit smaller, and then it's going to give it that nice bright orange color on those edges. So taking this a little bit further, using Kislev Flesh, I'm just going to stipple on some texture to give these curtains a little bit more character and make them look just a little bit nicer. Using Rhinox Hide, I'm going to base coat everything that I want to be a bronze color later on. And I'm also going to use this in a more watered down glaze layer consistency 
to fill in some of the wooden panels that have a little bit of this curtain paint on them, you know, from the airbrush. So we're going to hit pause on the painting for just a minute and take a look at the base. As you can see, there were a few back and forths on this idea for the base. And, you know, we'd kind of played around with some ideas and talked a little bit. And really, when it comes down to it, all credit goes to Ben in this case, because this was his project, his, you know, main thing. He, he likes to do bases. And I prefer the painting aspect of building these projects like this. So with a little bit of a plan in place, Ben started building the base, you know, starting with a lot of cork and moving on to building up kind of a platform where the black coach was going to sit on top of and laying down some nice terrain features that would make this base stand out. So it's really nice to see how this base is coming along. It's a fascinating process to me because I'm just not very good at it. But for now, we're going to move along and see what else we can do. Going from that Rhinox hide to Gorthor Brown, which is a pretty big step up, um, but watered down a lot into a glaze. I'm just going to put some highlights into the wood and create a little bit more of that wood texture that would be here, even though this is the black coach, not the brown coach, we're gonna put a little bit of brown into it to give that wooden appearance while still trying to keep a majority of it black to give black as an overall appearance. When you look at it, especially pretty far away, you're gonna say that's black, but you get up close and you're gonna to start to see some of these textures and different wood colors. Now with Baneblade Brown, which is even further of a step up, um, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but kind of localize it into either the sharpest areas or the centers of those highlights. And that's just gonna make that kind of final pop in the middles of those. So when you do see it from pretty far away, you know, you, you can tell that there's some kind of highlighting and some kind of texture going on while still maintaining an overall dark black coach appearance. So a while back, somebody left a comment saying it wouldn't be a rescue without Screaming Bell. And that still holds true. Screaming Bell is a fantastic color, and I'm going to use it again. So you can't stop me. So I'm just going to cover all of the bronze areas with this color, kind of lightly at first, and build it up in, in some of the top areas. Um, and that's going to let some of that Rhinox hide show through, and that's going to give that more dark brownish appearance, because I don't want it to be over the top and super bright. Now we're going to start aging some of this bronze with Nilic Oxide. Let a song sink into the sea Paint in gold the water rosaries Where the sailor... So this is going on pretty thick right now and that's because we're going to take this weathering a little bit further later and it's just pretty much to give an overall coverage to give that nylic oxide texture to these metallic parts. I'm going to put a little bit of that into the wood 
Um, and it's going to be a little much for right now, but because we're going to come back later and darken some of this stuff down, it's not too big of a deal. With De La Rowney's sepia ink, we're going to take that weathering a little bit further like I was just talking about. So this is going to cover a lot of that bronze and it's it's going to act almost as a wash in a way but there's a lot more control with an ink like this you can push it around and it's going to stain things and tint things and the more that you put it on it's going to start to darken them down so pretty much i'm putting them on to like those skulls up on top covering a lot of that nylic oxide and then wiping a little bit of it away to show what's underneath and so it darkens everything down and it looks pretty nice in the end. It's a pretty decent weathering technique with inks. With Necron compound and a small dry brush, I'm going to go over a lot of the carriage components that are metal. And that's just going to keep that black that's already underneath and give it kind of a shiny black metal appearance. A Using the sepia again, um, go over all of this metal into the corners and edges and that kind of thing, and that's going to simulate a lot of dirt and grime that's built up on these metal components. And the sepia is really nice for this because it still has that shiny appearance because it's an ink, so it still looks metallic and it also looks really dirty at the same time. With Mornfang Brown, I'm just going to give these ropes a quick layer. Switching gears a little bit, I'm going to bring in some Nagaroth Knight, and we're going to do the velvet inside this coffin. So lightly putting this on, um, it's going to take the black really well and it's going to keep everything nice and dark. Then bringing in Zarius purple, which is a little bit brighter. I'm going to go about halfway up onto each of those triangles that are pointing up and glaze toward the top to start bringing that highlight in. Then mixing a little bit of this white ink into that, it's just going to go another step up and kind of pastel it, which is nice for this uh, fabric like this. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing and try and make sure that that highlight gets onto the point of each of those triangles. Adding a little bit more white into that mix and keeping it in a mostly glazed consistency. I'm going to focus more on the left hand side of each of those triangles and then the ones that are pointing down from the top, I'm going to go from the right to the left and push that pigment onto the left side so that the white areas kind of meet in the middle. And that's going to give this nice three dimensional look with our velvet. Continuing in the coffin with dead flesh, I'm just going to paint in all of the skin from this dead vampire. So something I find kind of fascinating about this model in particular is that a detail like this was included that didn't have to be shown. And so when Ben sent me this model, the coffin was actually completely glued shut and into the black coach. It took a minute for me to get open and I finally did and none of it was painted on the inside. And I just think that it's a really interesting thought that you could actually paint this, glue the lid shut, and no one's actually going to see this unless you sell it to them or you die and somebody else gets it. 
Anyways, I just thought that was kind of fascinating and I wonder what the story behind this coffin is from Games Workshop. So I grabbed the first red that I saw on my desk. I think it was corn red or something or other. And I just glazed it onto kind of that sash he's got and maybe like a little tie. And that's just gonna give a little bit more variation in color because it's all pretty muted. And then I'm picking up just whatever brown I find first and I'm doing the same kind of thing. I'm just glazing that onto the clothes. And because I threw a little bit of a zenithal highlight on this earlier, um, a lot of those brighter folded areas are just gonna pop through with whatever color you're gonna put on top. So it's kind of whatever choice you wanna make as far as these clothes go. And that's just gonna give it an overall look without having to do much work right off the bat. So now we come to the magic of base making and probably the most fascinating part for me. After putting these base coats down, Ben starts to go through some of the paints that he's using and the types of things that he's using in order to build this stuff up. The use of GW's texture paints is incredible on this and honestly it's one of their best paints and it's something that everyone should have along with a lot of these different types of grasses and tufts, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna throw this video into a time-lapse of this awesome base, and we're just gonna watch this magic happen. Honestly, watching a base be made like this is pretty incredible and it's something that I hope to be able to achieve someday. And I just want to say that's a super good job, Ben. That's super good and I can't even explain how awesome it actually is. So obviously I'm not going to show the whole thing. Um, we're going to wait till the end for that, but let's get back to the painting and see what's coming up next. So I like the way that this is turning out so far. I really enjoy the curtains and I like the glow of that driver. And I like what you can see through the windows into the coffin. I think that that, that stuff is popping out nicely. I really don't know where to push this from here. I don't want it to get away from black too much. So we might have to think about doing something a little bit later down the line to make it a little bit more fancy. Now shifting focus a little bit onto the horses. I'm going to use this turquoise ink to go over pretty much the whole thing. And I already shot some of this from the bottom with some of that sepia. And putting the turquoise over the top is going to turn that brown into almost like a really dark blue black.
using some of this white ink from the top down. This is going to just lighten everything up on the top and it's going to set us up a little bit later for some color variation where you know when we spray a different color over this the white's going to catch that color and make it a little bit brighter than when it hits some of that turquoise. So we're going to move away from those horses for now and focus on some of these lanterns. Now there are a couple of lanterns that come with the black coach and one of them was completely missing and the other one was kind of janky and not really attached properly and I mean I could have fixed that but Ben got these really awesome HQ resin um, lanterns and we thought that it might be a better idea to swap out the old ones for these new really nice sculpted ones. So I'm laying these greens down kind of in order and then I'm coming in with this white and trying to shoot into the individual panes just to make it a lot brighter coming out of those areas. And pretty much the reason I'm making those lanterns as bright and ethereal as they are is that we're going to do a minor OSL where they're hanging on the coach. So I'm coming in with this white ink and I'm just lightly going over kind of in a circular area where those lanterns are hanging and then mixing in moot green into that white which is pretty bright and it acts almost more like a glaze like a waywatcher green which i don't have or i would have used and that's gonna tint everything just slightly wherever the white was hitting and that's gonna give us our osl from the lanterns and because we still have this color mix in the airbrush, I'm going to go over those whiter highlighted areas that we did earlier on the horses and a little bit of the carriage piece that's holding them there. And that's just going to bring in more of that ethereal color that's going to match that OSL. Then coming in with Menoth White Highlight, I'm going to edge highlight all of the brightest light areas where that light would be hitting. So mainly on these curtains, a little bit behind the driver's arm and on the weapon and on the other side it's kind of the same thing plus I was able to reach inside the cabin a little bit and get some of the edges of that coffin top that have been lifted toward that window so we're getting pretty close to finishing here and I'm gonna bring in this different model so with Katie and flesh tone I'm gonna take care of the skin So I'm filling in the clothes with brown. I'm coming in with corn red for the pants, because bright red pants, of course. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of Menoth white base for his hat and his belt. So like the green knight that Ben sent me a few months ago, he also sent me a lot of the lore pertaining to that model. And this black coach is no exception. And in talking about building the base, Ben wanted to make sure that we represented some of that lore in the overall model. So according to the Old World lore, the main city of Altdorf, the Empire City, shares its borders with a lot of the Vampire Count's land, or the Vampire Land. And because this model is a vampire model, we wanted to throw a little bit of that into the mix. So a peasant in this manner is generally represented by a brown coat over red and white garb. So Ben picked this model up about three years ago off of eBay for $43, which is a pretty sweet deal considering a lot of these older black coaches go at least for $70. I mean, I think new they're $70 and because they're kind of hard to find, the prices have just been slowly creeping up. But essentially, it's been sitting around for that long, three years. And when he came to me and said, hey, you know, I want to do a bigger project and I want to do this black coach, you know, it definitely intrigued me. 
because the way that he wanted to put it together wasn't just your average model build or rebuild. This was taking something that was broken that someone else kind of threw away. I mean, you know, he got $43 for it, so it's, a, it's good for him. But still, taking something that was this messed up and completely transforming it and putting it on almost a display base and making something really special out of it. And I really appreciate that you asked me to do this, Ben, and I had a lot of fun painting this model. And I hope that when you use this model in your army and you play it at your club, that people ask you the story, because this is definitely a model that's gone through a lot of mailboxes and has now ended up in a completely new place. I should also mention that because of the way that this base was done, it really gives the essence of what the Black Coach, I think, was originally intended to be. You know, from this old world standard and the way that it's supposed to be looked at, especially through, you know, the eyes of the Empire and seeing this representation of those models or the empire people really gives a sense of what's actually going on with this model and it becomes even more grandiose than it was before you know i've i've only ever seen pictures of it because the new black coach came out um you know on the old square base with a white background on it and it just it never really looked very good and you know you look at these newer models that have come out and you say wow you know they're so much better and the sculpts are nicer and all these things. And it's like, they carry that level of grandiose with them, you know, from the box. And that's great. And it's a great step in the right direction for GW, but these old models still carry weight, like literal and figurative. I mean, this is a heavy pewter model, but it just as it has a story on its own, you know, and that's something that we need to remember as hobbyists that these things don't need to be discarded. They don't need to be set aside because these new boxes have come out. I mean, those are all well and good, but these old models have value. And if you can fix them and have fun with someone doing a large project like this, or, or even on your own, you know, that's gonna bring you just as much joy as opening a new box and painting fresh. So Ben, thank you so much for letting me be part of this model's journey and helping you to realize this three-year-old vision that you had that you drew out on a napkin. You know, this was a special project for me. This is pushing me in a new level for my hobby and that really helps and I appreciate that and thank you. For everyone else who's still watching, please share the love in the comments for Ben. Thank him for coming up with this idea and sending this model so that we could do something pretty incredible. Thank you for joining me on another eBay miniature rescue. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Join us over at the Facebook group, facebook.com slash eBay miniature rescues to share your works in progress and your hobby stories and journey so far and talk with other cool hobby people. For everything else, all applicable links are down in the description. Thank you again for joining me. I am Casey, and I will see you in the next video.